How's it going, y'all? Today we're going to rebuild the master cylinder on a couple of my Yamahas. This is something I've never done before. So we've got, uh, of course, our service manual on hand, which shows all the breakdown of the parts. And got a rebuild kit also. Rebuild kit here that has some of the basic seals, spring, this guy here, I don't know all the terminology just yet, push rod, clip, sir clip right there, it's large washer, number seven, so basically everything in here is going to be replaced, and the reason I've felt like diving into this uh, this diaphragm right here cylinder boot it's called number five cylinder boot oh, I was just getting really dry rotted on my bike I was getting severely cracked in here and uh, just noticed a lot of wear on a lot of these parts on my uh, bike that's yeah it's got a few hours on it but this is something I've never bothered with before so we'll do a video and learn how to do it together it doesn't look all that difficult and let's go look at the bike itself show you what we're going to be looking at all right I've got the master cylinder removed from the bike I still need to disconnect the brake line here and of course drain the fluid out of it here but what we'll be looking at get her to focus here inside there you see the that circlip and that washer which are these two guys here which are on the diagram six and seven and of course number five the cylinder boot will be replaced as well as this guy here which is number four the push rod which actually actuates the hydraulic mechanism inside there and the original one, you know, it just started to get cracked. This is to prevent dirt from getting up in there. It was just looking kind of nasty. And of course the push rod starts to get wear on it as well from so much use and dirt. Okay, so we're going to swap it out with the new one from our kit here nice new boot compared to this one that's very very brittle it's original you know this is off of a 2009 model so quite a bit of hours on this guy here but this one has a lot more solid feel to it same with the washer and the clip they'll just do better so we're gonna disconnect, you know, we're gonna pull that circlip out of there as well as that washer. Pull everything apart, as you see in the diagram here. All of these guys will be removed. And then we'll clean everything out inside the master cylinder. I'm sure it's gonna be kind of nasty, even though the fluid is pretty fresh. I try to, uh, you know, bleed my brakes fairly frequently. But we're still going to remove all that fluid and inspect everything inside. And once we get all it torn apart, we'll take some more video and see how it looks. So we'll be right back. All right, uh, what I'm going to do, I've got the master cylinder mounted in my bench vise here. It'll be easier to work with. As far as working with all these screws and removing clips and everything 
So we got her mounted there. And first we need to drain out the brake fluid. So we'll run everything down into a little drainage bucket here. Get all that drained out. Remove the screws from the cover of the master cylinder. And might as well go ahead and disconnect the upper part of the brake line. And we'll take a look inside and see how our looks in there. And we're going to get this clip and washer removed with our circlip wrench. And we'll see what it looks like. Make sure you keep everything together here. We've got, of course, the top cover here. Keep all these guys organized so you know what goes where. Be careful with the heads on the screws. They're easy to strip out. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Those guys are easy to strip out. Very annoying. I think these are still usable for now, but if they start to get rounded out inside there, you might as well replace them. Becomes nothing but a headache. And these are the countersink types of fasteners too, so just gotta stick with that style. And let's take a look in here. We got the fluid we're going to drain out. Like I said, I try to keep my fluid bled in my brakes. Makes a big difference in how your brakes feel. So if this fluid looks really dark and dirty, you definitely should change it out. And you can usually tell by looking in your little window right there. If you can't see in there with the fluid, that means that fluid is done. You should definitely bleed your brakes frequently, depending on how often you ride and how hard you ride. So we're going to drain this out from down here, of course. Got your uh, bleeder. Your bleeder right there. As well as this guy right here, loosen that out, let all the fluid drain out. And then we'll remove the upper part of the brake line right there. So we can get started disassembling. All right, we get to use my nifty little stand that can hold my camera. It's also my carburetor holding stand you may have seen in some of my other videos something I built so let's start removing some of the hardware on here and when you're working with brake fluid I always recommend you get your uh, nitrile gloves on Brake fluid and skin are not good to mix together. It's not good for your skin at all. So let's get this guy off here with our 14 millimeter. You can just open it first. Let it start draining. And 
and we'll let that drain all the way out and then we'll move on something else to look at I got two brass washers here and here if you have never replaced those you probably should now it just helps prevent leaks from where the brake line meets into the caliper here it's always good to keep fresh ones on there if you have problems with not being able to get a good seal or your brakes feel kind of soft and mushy it's likely that either your brake line needs replacing just from wear and tear or these two brass washers need replacing or your bolt needs replacing as well a lot of kits a lot of brake line kits will come with these they just get worn out over time so you see this guy here they just the brass washer goes on each side of the uh, brake line mount like so I know mine are fairly new so I'll keep a I'll just keep a hold of mine and reuse them they've only been on for uh, less than a year actually but if you've never replaced yours definitely do that all right back up in our bench vise here Let's see if we can get this guy focused looking inside Down inside your master cylinder, if you've never looked at this before, it's kind of cool. The way everything works, uh, your brake lever would be mounted out here. When you pull it in, it pushes that little piston. Let's see if we can get in here. It pushes in down at the very bottom. You can see that down at the very bottom of the bowl here. All the way down here, a little piston starts coming in from underneath here, which will allow fluid to pass back and forth, which is basically how the hydraulic system works forces fluid ever so little bit out down here to push your calipers together and then you, when you release the brake brake lever fluid comes back up lets the uh, brake pads retract and release I've never really looked at that either so it looks pretty cool and uh, what we're going to do is disassemble and remove the upper brake line right there it's just the same 14 millimeter also the two brass washers if yours have never been replaced up top you should definitely replace them now and then we'll remove this clip Similar to any sir clip right here. Get you some uh, sir clip pliers to remove that, and then this washer right here. So, we're going to do that now and see what it looks like inside with our 14 millimeter right here. Again, make sure that you've got your nitrile gloves on. I doubt uh, latex gloves would be able to survive very long. Latex gloves are really not so great for working with solvents and fluids. The solvent breaks them down easily, rips holes in them in an instant. So here's our brass washer should probably go ahead and replace those if you have not
the other guy there or bolt there if that has not been replaced either you should probably likely go ahead and do that all these things will help your brakes just feel better over the years they just get worn dirty nasty you can see where the fluid actually comes out of this tiny hole right here that's where the fluid comes out from your master cylinder and it looks the same on the other end of the uh, brake line as well has another tiny hole just like that the fluid ever so slightly comes out of there when you push the brake lever in hydraulic force Here's the other end of it right here it's on your caliper very similar on both sides it's just simple hydraulics brilliant hydraulics as well because the old days they used to have cable uh, drum brakes like in the older cars yeah not so good some mini bikes these days still have cable brakes not so good anyway make sure all of your fluid is completely drained out of your brake line as well as all your parts just make sure everything is drained fully and then we'll see if we can get that uh, circlip and washer removed inside there and move on now they make a variety of different circlip pliers you see the very long kind here is what we're going to need because it is quite a distance down into there to remove that circlip of course they make other kinds here they make some that pull in when you hit the lever they make some that pull out when you press it we're going to need one that pulls in of course to remove this clip this guy here you can get online pretty much anywhere very handy and it's got those little tips on the end right there we're going to need that to be able to get in here and remove this guy let's get our light back on it all right so with our on well, these days i'm going to get bifocals because i can barely see in close range here be careful with circlips you, know, you may want to keep your hand over it so it doesn't come flying out of there hit you in the face okay pull it in gently and remove didn't quite get it all the way you have to push down kind of firmly you can see everything's starting to come apart in there so be careful at this point okay you got the clip got that washer both of these will be replaced inside there see that big plunger that's actually how this all works as far as braking as far as the hydraulic movement Let's see if we can demonstrate it here you can see pushing it in and over time there's o-rings in there they get nasty this whole mechanism gets pretty nasty so it's a good idea to you know periodically break all this down make sure you keep everything separated and organized so that you can clearly tell what goes where when it's time to put it back together Alrighty, so let's get my pick here. Be careful because I have never dove in here before. Pull everything out carefully, see what it all looks like. See all that? Got several seals. These seals also will break down over time. So if you have issues with your brakes just not feeling good, notice the small end of this spring here. Of course, we'll go 
right there. So it's a good idea to take pictures with your cell phone or whatever, you know, just so it can be obvious when you're pulling it all apart, how it's going to go back together. And in which way these seals are facing also. Notice they've, they're facing towards the master cylinder as far as the opening of those. So, you know, make sure you keep that the same, of course, when it's time to reassemble. They look a little, uh, you know, a little washed out, a little nasty. Not horrible, but might as well go ahead and replace them if we've already gone this far. And we're going to clean everything also. I will also clean out inside. Let me get a better light here. Inside there. If you can see inside here. Let's take a look in here. It's a first for me as well. Can't really see too well in there. But that this region should be cleaned out as well with your you know your nylon spiral brush. Should clean all that out. Also be aware there's probably some fluid left in there, brake fluid, so don't get any of that on your hands. Don't get brake fluid on any painted surfaces either. So keep your little bucket handy. Keep everything poured out in there. Okay. Very basic and kind of cool looking. So give everything you see here a good old-fashioned cleaning there's also seals and whatnot deep inside here we'll look at our manual See what of that might need removal or replacing. So once you've gone this deep into it, you might as well replace everything that can be replaced because we don't want to have to do this again anytime soon. So there you go. We're going to do some cleaning with our spiral brush inside there, looking a little nasty. We'll clean that out clean all this up and we'll come back all right with uh, your assortment of brushes spiral brushes like these these are good for gently cleaning these areas here don't get too aggressive and don't use any uh, metal brushes for that area uh, in this region here also where the brake lever goes it gets crusty right in there too I used a you know just a brass brush like this just put her up in there and just some gentle scrubbing now the manual recommends you do not use any solvents in here only use clean brake fluid on the new parts as well so uh, you know don't go crazy spraying contact cleaner and things like that in here just do the best you can to get all this region nice and clean inside and when you're replacing those cup seals like we saw on that piston which is these guys I haven't replaced them yet just use clean brake fluid 
on these little seals too when you replace them and if anything looks excessively worn simply put just replace them you can get the, an entire little kit that has all these parts in them not very expensive but a uh, good idea just to go ahead and swap all that out you might as well right if you've gone this far that's how I try to do uh, repairs you know if I've already gone in deep enough into some sort of repair and I see something that looks excessively worn out or broken or frayed or whatever you know you might as well go ahead and replace it and then you use your compressed air to you know gently blow all this out as well and the next thing we'll do is replace these cups these are called little cup seals these black seals right there replace those and make sure all this is cleaned off nicely and I get ready to put her back together all right something to notice here's the old part the original part here's the replacement part it's called the uh, piston the two o-rings get my flashlight here the two o-ring or the two they're called cup cylinder cups they're different size notice Got a smaller ID with the one on the right, larger ID with on the left. That means they can only go on one way. The larger one will go there, the smaller one will go there, just like on the original. Notice which way they're facing also. You gotta make sure you install them the same way. And only use clean brake fluid as far as lubrication of these new seals here. Okay, we're gonna do that next. All right, now something I'm noticing, so I'm getting ready to replace these cup seals on the master cylinder piston. Not easy to do because they fit very tight on there, very snug fit. And if your hands are slippery and all that, you may have to take your gloves off, clean your hands off really well because this is not gonna be all that easy to throw on these new seals. So what I've done is take the replacement piston Mount it in my bench vise so that it can sort of, you know, hold itself still. Make sure you use the soft jaws, of course, so you don't mar anything up. And then you can pry the new seal on a little easier. And be careful, this thing will go flying as well. You know, when you're trying to push it on here, it'll all of a sudden just take off and you won't be able to find it. So, you know, make sure that you keep an eye on that thing. But that seems to be the easiest way to put this new cup seal on the piston. Put it in your vise, and then you can manhandle it on there. I would not use any kind of uh, picks or you know, screwdriver or anything like that, because you'll probably tear something in this cup seal. I would only use my hands only to push that on, and it'll go on. Just make sure everything is clean, and maybe slightly dab it with a little bit of brake fluid right in there. Uh, it'll just make it easier to put on there. All right, you see there, the new cup seal. This guy right here, compared to the original. So you can see easily how brakes can start to feel, you know, like kind of mushy, not a lot of feel to them, because these seals start to wear out and they don't do what they're supposed to do, which is seal up that cavity inside the master cylinder anyway it's not that hard to put this guy on but i recommend you put it in a vise like this with your soft jaws make it a lot easier and now to do the other side which will be the lower one i'm flipping the piston over putting it back in the vise and this guy is a good bit smaller Make sure it faces the correct way, which will be upward like this. But same process, this one should be even easier than the first cup seal. All right, and there it is. Now 
no big deal to put it on there. Just, you know, you just kind of have to manhandle it. Make sure both these seals are facing the same way. And they appear to be, there's the original. And then this spring, here's a new spring. The small end is what goes on the piston, like so. You'll just push it on there firmly. And then any lubrication you will do to put it back together, put everything back together, just use clean brake fluid on this stuff. No grease. No solvents of any kind. Let's do that next. All right, now let's compare the original stuff to the new stuff. All right. And let's get her put back together. All right, we're about to put the piston back in. Down in here, make sure all this is cleaned out. No debris, of course, no metal particles, no dirt. All this should be very clean because this is where it all happens. It's where your brake lever is basically coming out from here. So we're going to reinstall our piston here. That'll get pushed down in there and then we'll reinstall the washer and circlip and the seal. Alrighty, so make sure everybody is nice and clean. And just use a little bit of clean brake fluid on these cup seals here to put her back together. Alrighty, a little bit of brake fluid on these seals. Make sure you're gentle, pushing all that back together, like so. I can already feel that it feels better than it did before. Okay, now there's a spring in there, so be careful. You don't want it to come flying out on you. All right, now we take our big flat washer from your new kit. This guy here. Use your pinky, push it down in there. Okay, now we're going to have to take our circlip pliers again. The long ones, of course. Make sure that your wrench, you know, make sure that your pliers are clean also. Just wipe any dust debris off of there. Okay. Be careful with these as well. You don't want this clip to go flying into oblivion. You'll never find it. Just like doing circlips on your top end. If that thing goes flying. Yeah, not fun. Anyway. All right. Now we gently hold the clip in our pliers. Use both hands to make sure it doesn't go flying to who knows where. Gently squeeze them together. All this very gently. Push her down in there. And release. Make sure I use my pinky. Make sure it's in there good. You may want to double check with your with your pliers. Make sure that it's seated in that groove properly. Let me get a light here. Make 
make sure that boy is in there properly. Alrighty. All right, now the, the clip seats into place inside there. You'll see a little channel in, uh, way all the way out in here. Let's see if we can get in a little tighter. Yeah, all the way inside here. There's a channel in there, so it'll snap into place. And this clip, be careful with it. Get it seated in there nicely. And then you'll see the new piston. Moves freely, all is well. Then we will reassemble the new, still don't have my terminology mastered yet for this, the master cylinder boot, which is this guy. It will face outward like this. You'll push that in nice and firmly. And then the push rod, push rod, notice it has two ends. This end is smaller than this one. The larger end is what goes in. It's the large end that goes in there, okay? So it'll basically come poking out like so. Make sure that seat's in there properly. I'll need both hands to, uh, you know, get this all down in there. And that should be that, actually, after we get that put back together. We'll then clean off the cap. And diaphragm, we'll clean all that off. Don't use any solvents, just use clean brake fluid and a, you know, a lint-free cloth. Clean all that out. And then your reservoir float. That little guy, you know, just clean it off with a lint-free cloth. And we'll put her all back together and uh, go from there. Now when you're putting your brake lines back on, if you haven't replaced these two brass washers, you should do that now. And notice the bend of the brake line has to go outward from the master cylinder. Because it could lay on there both ways, but you should let it bend outward away from it. There you go. And don't over tighten, of course, this here. You don't have to uh, muscle it like crazy. The bolt here, it's called a union bolt. It's tightened to about 22 foot pounds, which is not a ton. Of course, it's not hand tight. But it's not going to be like, uh, you know, it's all you can give it either. So it's just nice and firm. But uh, if you're curious, it's about 22 foot-pounds as per your service manual.